see you next, Mario. Oh, man, the Hawks beat the Knicks in five games. Trey Young literally just became the villain of the year of Knicks. This dude last night at the end of the game just bowed to the Knicks bow to the Knicks bench and bow to Madison Square Garden and just walked off that court. He literally just became a villain, bro. He just said, screw this, I'm off to the next round. But I'll look, Mario, the Hawks did a really good job. As for the New York Knicks, they did a decent job in the first couple games. They won game two. They came close in game one. But then after that, Mario, I have no idea what happened. Because after, after game two, they didn't even hit 100 points. I have no idea what happened to this team, Mario. They just kind of – they were there the first couple of games, and then they just fell off. They fell off the face of the earth. I don't know what happened. Um, let me go to the stats real quick. Uh, real quick, Trey Young was averaging 29.2 points per game. So he was doing a really good job, Mario. He was basically carrying the Atlanta Hawks team, and he did a really good job. Overall, the Hawks did a great job as well. Um Bogdan averaged 14.4 points. John Col- uh, John Collins um, uh, averaged 12.2 points. So overall, Mario, the team did a really good job. And I look at the Knicks, Mario. You look at Julius Randle. I mean, he had 18 points per game. So it's not bad. But, you know, a lot of people say he could have been better, which he could have, you know. He really could have been better. Um, Same thing with Derrick Rose, you know, 19.4 points. He didn't do too, too bad, but... Again, a lot of people expected this team to do a lot better than what they did. And honestly, Mario, I don't blame them. You know, they they did all of that in the regular season just to fall like this in the playoffs. You know, that's that's upsetting. Um, but if I'm a New York Knicks fan, Mario, I'm I'm very I'm very optimistic about the future. You know, just that that that's a feeling the Knicks fans haven't had to have in many years. You know, but if I'm a New York Knicks fan, I'm very optimistic about the future. You know, despite this playoff loss, if you continue to do what you do did this season going into next season, then I can see you guys having a lot of success moving forward, you know. Um, and again, like I mentioned, that's something that you guys haven't felt in a long time. But again, as long as James Dolan makes the right choices, you know, I hope he does for his sake, then I can see this team going far in the future. But right now, you know, this year, it was a little bit unproven against the Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks did a really good job, Mario. Um, in the second round, I believe they faced the 76ers, who also beat the Wizards. We'll talk about that in the next video, though. Um, but, yeah, Mario, the Atlanta Hawks just beat the brakes off the New York Knicks, and they did a really good job. So, I got to give, I gotta tip my cap to the Atlanta Hawks, and I do wish them the best of luck in the second round. As for the New York Knicks, Mario, um, they did what they could, but it just wasn't enough. Um, so I do wish them the best of luck in the offseason. I do wish them the best of luck next season. Got to go back to the drawing board, figure this out. And we'll just see what happens with the New York Knicks moving forward. And again, the Hawks face the Sixers in the second round of the playoffs. So that's going to be a good one. Right. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations to the Atlanta Hawks. And, you know, best of luck to the Knicks. They had a good season this year, you know, but unfortunately I had to come to an end. All right. Let me tell you something. Back in probably like 2012, 2013, okay? If you would have asked me about Trey Young, I would have told you as a 12, as like a 12 year old, 13 year old kid, oh, he's cocky. You know, he shouldn't be that cocky, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something, okay? I am growing up now. Trey Young is a savage, okay? This man literally just decided to go bow, wave to the crowd, goodbye, and then walk off. And you know, that's not what I love about, that's not the biggest thing I love about Trey Young. You know what I really love about Trey Young? Let me let me tell you what I really love about Trey Young, Nate, okay? Nothing bothers this kid. Literally nothing. I, absolutely like nothing. Okay, maybe the part about like the fans spitting on him, that possibly bothered him, you know? And that would bother any, any sane person, you know? If somebody would just go spit on someone, that would have definitely bothered them. But let me tell you something, okay? During that game, Julius Randle took the ball and he kind of like pat, like dropped it on his lap when uh, Trey Young was on the ground. Did Trey Young react? Did, again, did Trey Young react? No, it's okay. He just beat your team and he got you guys eliminated. Okay, Julius Randle was probably a little salty at that time, but it's all good. After that, um, Noah's Noel kind of shoulder checks uh, Trey Young. Okay. And then Solomon Hill and Nerlens Noel end up kind of, uh, kind of like you know interacting or like kind of crossing paths. But I think people broke it up before it got to anything else different, uh, anything serious. But let me tell you something, Nate. 
I like how nothing bothers this kid. I like how he walks around with that confidence, okay? I like how he walks around with that confidence. I like how he just plays his game, you know? And he even, he, he's okay to talk crap too, you know? He, he loves, to, again, he loved being the villain in this series. And I hope that he embraces that role more. You know, now again, I hope that nobody spits at him, you know, or does something bad to him. That's that's what I'm not hoping. But I'm hoping that he can embrace that villain role because let me tell you something. That role right there, the role of the villain for different teams, that sells. Okay, LeBron James, when he was with the Miami Heat and he was the villain, it sold. Kevin Durant, when he was the villain with uh, Golden State, it sold. Okay, so that's what it does. Okay, when you're a villain, it sells. And when you're a good guy, it sells too, but not as much as when you're a villain because people are literally watching you to see you because a lot of people want to see you fail okay that's a big it's a big key the biggest key that is that that happens in is boxing it's the biggest key act like the villain get your payday Floyd Mayweather had done it for so many years people didn't like Floyd Mayweather well guess what he was the cash cow of the business and he ended up becoming a billionaire as a boxer okay as much as people don't like him Jake Paul but you watch his fights because you want to see him lose so you pay for the fight to watch him lose it's a genius strategy so the Trey Young, keep playing that villain part. Okay, you did it in New York, do it in Philadelphia. And I hope these damn fans don't end up getting out of, out of haywire and just and do something to him because that's not what I'm hoping for. But I'm saying, Trey Young, you played the villain role in New York. If you play as good as you did in New York with Philadelphia, which is going to be a, a lot tougher of a task, play that villain role. You know, I again, but these fans, they just back off him real quick. You know, you can boo him, you can chant like all you want, but... I don't want to. I don't want to see any. I don't want to see this kid get popcorn dumped on him, or him getting spat on, or any other thing that a fan might do. Because these fans are unpredictable. Nate. And finally, Nate, we had a game where a fan didn't do nothing. What a shock, Nate! Oh my God. <laughs> but regardless, you know uh, the Atlanta Hawks, man. That that team itself, they really did a great job. I mean, you can point to Trey Young, who dropped a uh, twenty nine and nine point eight assists, basically ten assists. You can point to uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich, who had um, who had 14.4 uh, 14 points, 6.6 .6 rebounds, and 3.8 assists. You can point to John Collins, who had 12.2 points and 6 rebounds. You can point to Clint Capella, who had 10 points and 13 rebounds. So when you're able to look at it, Nate, there's a lot to point to. But um, regardless, the Atlanta Hawks, they just played better. You know, the Knicks played a good game, too, until, like, the last, like, two or whatever. Um Again, like uh, like we mentioned, you know, they it was it was a pretty competitive series until the Hawks beat them. Uh, the Hawks beat the Knicks in Game Three, one hundred five to ninety four. Then Game Four, they beat them one thirteen to ninety six, and then Game Five, they beat them one hundred three to eighty nine. So it just seemed like after once Game Three hit, it just started getting worse and worse right there for the Knicks. And I don't know what happened. You know, all I could tell you is Trey Young was cooking, and they couldn't stop him. It's as simple as that. But regardless, I like the way Trey Young carries himself. You know, nothing really bothers him. Not, again, he doesn't like. Again, he he is an instigator. Don't get, like don't get me wrong. He, like I've seen in moments like we he, like when my, especially with my Chicago Bulls back when Chris Dunn was there. Like he knows how to like rub someone the wrong way. But he but again, I like how like nothing not not a lot of things bother Trey Young. You know, even though he'll people will get pissed at him, he's not gonna engage in that. He's just gonna play his game, and I respect that. Okay, because Trey Young is is one of, is the future is one of the future stars of this league and he's suddenly starting to build himself up as a star so with that being said i wish the atlanta hawks the best of luck against the philadelphia 76ers i think that's going to be a very good series and that's for trey young keep doing you man